okay guys so uh, now uh, we are going to shift into this shortest job first plus prem to concept okay now it is also called as shortest remaining time first scheduling algorithm okay now shortage of first plus preemptive or shortage of or shortest remaining time first scheduling algorithm means the process which arrive first uh, the process uh, which is having uh, less burst time will be selected first for execution okay and we can interrupt process during execution okay that is nothing but preemptive concept okay in the previous example uh, that is shortage of first normal shortage of first scheduling algorithm with non preemptive or normal uh, execution we are not going to interrupt or uh, any process during execution but in shortest remaining time first or shortage of first plus preemptive concept we can interrupt processes during execution okay now for example again we'll take some processes like p1 p2 p3 p4 okay along with some arrival time okay 0 1 2 3 that is at instant 0 process p1 arrived that is nothing but at instant 0 in ready queue we are having only p1 process okay at instant 1 in the ready queue we are having two process p1 and p2 processes at instant 2 we are having three processes p1 p2 and p3 in ready queue for execution okay then burst time this is very important parameter in shortage of first scheduling algorithm because from this parameter that is burst time we decide which process to execute first okay now again we'll draw gun chart for this okay our gun chart will start from zero okay now at instant zero that is arrival time is zero we're having only p1 process for execution okay forget about this burst time okay if we see burst time then logical uh, then with non preemptive concept we we must have to execute p2 process first but at instant zero we are having only p1 process so we must have to take p1 process first for execution okay now we are not going to execute p1 process completely because we are having this preemptive concept okay so after one millisecond if we see we are having p2 process so if we compare burst time of p1 and p2 process then burst time of p2 process is smaller than p1 process what does it mean short or what does shortage of first scheduling algorithm tell us that we must have to execute p2 process so we are going to take p2 process now after 2 millisecond that we are starting uh, we, we have started executing of p1 process uh, sorry p2 process okay so 2 millisecond consider here timeline 2 millisecond after 2 millisecond we are having p3 process now again if we compare these three processes then still we are having p2 process which is having less burst time and then after 3 millisecond we are having p4 process so if we compare all these processes we are having p2 process which is having less burst time so what does it mean after 4 millisecond or after 3 mill uh, sorry after 3 millisecond all processes arrive into ready queue okay now all processes are available for execution okay so we have to consider this p2 process so p2 processes burst time is 4 millisecond so 1 plus 4 5 okay now out of this 8 millisecond of p1 process burst time we have executed 1 millisecond so remaining time is 7 now we have to compare okay p2 process we executed completely okay so p1 p3 and p4 
okay out of these processes p4 process is having less burst time that is nothing but 5 so we are going to take p4 process again burst time is 5 5 plus 5 is nothing but 10 okay now <clears throat> p4 process is also executed completely now if we compare p1 and p3 process p1 process burst time is 7 millisecond so we are going to take p1 process for execution so 10 plus 7 17 okay and then last p3 process which is having 9 burst time okay so 17 plus 9 26 okay now this is gun chart for shortage of first plus preemptive concept okay now if we want to calculate waiting time completion time and all these things okay then we have to consider this gun chart only okay now suppose we'll take first completion time okay now what is completion time of p1 process okay if we clearly see p1 process completed at 17 millisecond so 17 what is completion time of p2 process it is completed at 5 millisecond what is completion time of p3 process 26 millisecond and what is completion time of p1 process 10 millisecond now we can see what is completion time of p1 process okay p1 process yeah uh, we can see here also uh, completion time of p1 process we can see here also and we can see here also so in the current chart we have to select completion time of a process which is rightmost side of the gun chart okay so p1 process appear here also and here also so we have to select the rightmost process of p1 that is nothing but this one okay so that's why we have written 17 over now next uh, thing uh, we have to calculate is turnaround time and waiting time okay now the turnaround time is nothing but okay now the next concept is uh, we have to calculate turnaround time and waiting time okay now the turnaround time is the interval from the time of submission of the process to the time of completion of the process okay it is nothing but the interval from the time of submission of the process okay so when we submit process for the execution till the time of completion of the process it is nothing but the turnaround time okay now next is waiting time what is waiting time waiting time is nothing but the sum of the periods spent waiting in the ready queue uh, because uh, in the previous tutorials i have already uh, <clears throat> discussed that processes normally goes into ready queue and from ready queue they are normally uh, selected uh, for the execution to the cpu okay so the waiting time is nothing but the time uh, or uh, the sum of the periods spent waiting in the ready queue okay now this is related to waiting time and turnaround time okay now for calculation of the waiting time and turnaround time we are having formulas okay so for turnaround time completion time minus arrival time okay and for waiting time turnaround time minus burst time okay now for calculation of waiting time we require turnaround time so we must have to calculate turnaround time first and then waiting time okay now we'll write here turnaround time and waiting time now what is turnaround time it is nothing but completion time minus arrival time so this is arrival time and this is completion time okay now what is completion time for p1 process 17 what is arrival time zero so turnaround time is 17 
what is completion time for p2 process 5 what is arrival time 1 so 5 minus 1 4 similarly what is completion time for p3 process 26 arrival time 2 so 26 minus 2 24 and what is completion time of p4 process 10 and what is arrival time 3 so 10 minus 3 7 so this is turnaround time okay for all these processes now what is waiting time it is nothing but turnaround time minus burst time okay so 17 for p1 process we are having 17 turnaround time and burst time is 8 for p2 process we are having 4 burst time and sorry uh, 4 burst time and turnaround time is also 4 so this is turnaround time minus burst time so if we calculate like this then 17 minus 8 9 4 minus 4 0 24 for p3 24 minus 9 that is 15 and 7 minus 5 2 okay so here we calculated turnaround time and waiting time for each process okay now next thing is if we want to calculate average waiting time and average turnaround time then we have to take average of these waiting times okay so if we take or we want to calculate average waiting time then 9 plus 0 plus 15 plus 2 divided by number of processes we are having four processes okay so it will come approximately 6.5 millisecond okay so in this way we can solve problems related to this turnaround time and waiting time